Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a particular torch infection. So for those of you who aren't aware, uh, torch infections um, refer to a group of of different congenital infections or infections that um, uh, babies acquire uh, while they're in the the womb or just after birth. And that these uh, torch infections, this is an acronym that stands for toxoplasmosis, which is caused by uh, Toxoplasma gondii. The um, R stands for rubella, the C stands for cytomegalovirus, H stands for herpes simplex virus, and then the O is uh, a uh, conglomeration of different infections that include things like syphilis, varicella zoster, um, parvovirus B19, and the O stands for other. Okay, so the torch infections refer to a group of different infections that occur in uh, uh, babies either um, within the womb where it's transmitted, uh, uh, where it can be transmitted through the placenta or just after birth, um, particularly when they're uh, passing through the uh, birth canal. Okay, so what I want to share with you today is an autopsy case that I had a while ago of a uh, premature baby who had one of these torch infections. Uh, and we'll figure out which one um, at the end of this case. Okay, so if we first start out, we look at different organs from the body. The first organ that we're going to look at is the lung. So on the left side of the screen, I have an undisturbed lung where uh, uh, on this left side and this right side, this is the lung tissue. In between uh, here, we have the trachea and then the larynx up here. Um, and then on the right side of the screen, uh, we've cut through the lung tissue and we're looking at the cut section of the parenchyma of the lung tissue. And what we notice is that both on the pleural surface and also on the cut surface of the lung, uh, it's a very atypical abnormal, abnormal appearance characterized by this splotchy um, uh, pattern of discoloration. Uh, and if you were to touch this, it would probably feel very soft because it's got a lot of necrosis to it. So this is a blotchy kind of splotchy pattern of um, uh, variegated discoloration associated with necrosis uh, throughout the lung uh, tissue. If we look at a different organ, this is the spleen on the left side. This is the undisturbed spleen where we're looking at the capsular surface, the outer surface of the spleen. Um, and then we, we've also uh, see this same kind of variegated uh, appearance and this uh, irregular um, uh, discoloration, which is associated with necrosis. Uh, on the cut surface of the spleen, we can see that it's very hemorrhagic. In the liver, we can see uh, a, a very similar appearance. Again, there's these irregular regions of uh, discoloration, uh, uh, giving this variegated appearance, and, and uh, there's, there's a, a large region here that is very abnormal, and if you were to feel that, it would probably feel very soft because it's associated with um, uh, necrosis. And so when we look at that on microscopic appearance, we can see that indeed there is quite a bit of necrosis and hemorrhage. And we also notice that within some of these um, cells, it looks like the nuclei contain these little inclusions. So if we move on to the brain tissue, I, I don't have a gross appearance of the brain, uh, but I do have a microscopic image of the brain. Uh, the reason why I don't have a gross um, a photograph of the brain is that the brain was very uh, soft and diffluent. So uh, what we're seeing here is a low power image of the brain and I would like to bring your attention here where there is this increased uh, cellularity in the cortex of this brain and if we look on higher power here we notice that um, there are individual uh, uh, cell necrosis there were larger areas of necrosis in other uh, places um, some of the cells have apoptosis and then some of these cells importantly they look like they have little inclusions here 
And so when you see inclusions in uh, nuclei of various cells, you want to consider in your differential a viral infection. So what we can do is we can do immunohistochemical stains that will specifically identify the proteins associated with these viruses, uh, and it will label it with this brown color. Um, and so we did that and looking for various viruses, and this is the result for herpes simplex virus. So uh, in regions where you see just this dull gray uh, blue appearance, this is normal um, non-infected tissue. And then in the center of the screen where we see all of this um, brown looking um, uh, stuff. This is where the immunohistochemical stain is labeling uh, the tissue that is infected with uh, viral particles. So uh, this patient had widespread involvement of the brain. If we look on higher power, again, we can see how the, the, the blue-gray nuclei, these are negative, but all of these nuclei that um, have this brown stain, these nuclei are infected with uh, virus particles, and the virus particles are picking up the stain. So this is a very positive result for positive meaning that the uh, virus is there, uh, result for herpes simplex virus in which these cells have been infected with herpes simplex virus. This particular area is in the brain, but we stained um, many of the other organs and it showed positive uh, labeling as well. So on the, the bottom right hand corner of this uh, screen, we show a glass slide where there's a very thinly cut section of liver here. And if we look with just the naked eye, we can see that there's brown sta staining everywhere throughout this liver. Um, if we look on low power using the microscope, again, we can see that there's brown staining um, and uh, widespread throughout this tissue. And then this is higher power again. Again, the, the brown stain is where the immunohistochemical stain is labeling the virus particles, showing that these cells are infected with a herpes simplex virus. And so as you can see, the um, um, and, and looking at sections of the lung, uh, with this blotchy pattern, looking at sections of the spleen and also sections of the liver. Uh, all of these abnormalities that we're seeing is due to herpes simplex virus infection. And so this is one of the uh, major reasons uh, why it's important for um, women who are pregnant uh, to get good prenatal care so, th so that we can have the best uh, possible outcome for uh, these babies. So uh, in conclusion, this is a torch infection specifically uh, that is due to herpes simplex virus. Um, and that is our uh, case for today. Please join us next time for more videos on adventures in neuropathology. Uh, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.